Okay, so I'd like to call this meeting of the Historic District Commission's Organizational Focus Committee to order. It is uh, Thursday. Wait. Yeah, it's 9 1. September. 1. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong, the wrong agenda. I'm sorry. Thursday, September 1st. At shortly after 324. 324 p.m. Okay. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong agenda and it gave me a mind freeze. I'm like, it's not Friday. All right. So call the meeting to order. Um Val, you're here. I'm here. Uh get a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion. Okay. Uh, we don't need to do a roll call. I'm an I too. Minutes, um, anything on minutes? No. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, we'll get there. Uh, new business. I just, we were going to do a um, update on the uh, data assessments, basically uh, deliver uh, goals and deliverables for uh, from outside parties with respect to the WPI student project, um, taking a look at to determine what specifics specific goals and deliverables would be helpful to the HDC. We had a discussion on that last week. I think very productive, um, some very productive ideas came forth. Um, and we today also we're gonna review the, uh, come up with a strategy in order to make a recommendation to the HDC on how to proceed with the work group. Um, it's going to be a relatively short meeting for a couple reasons. One, uh, one of the uh, invited persons, Andy Puccino, who's been serving as a just at-large person from the public, is not able to attend. He's on vacation. And uh, the person who submitted an interest form is not available to be here because they had a previous medical appointment. Um, so the the... Andy, we would have looked to for some additional conversation, and I'd like him to be here uh, for a conversation on what types of goals and deliverables, kind of firming those up. And um, presuming we're gonna have a, a member on board, I'd like to have that member involved. So as opposed to getting into discussion <laughs> on that topic, we're gonna hold off on it, right? Well, I have to explain what I know, we're doing. I know, so, I know. You know, we're, you know, the way it's been going kind of politicized. I'm meeting so. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, so I'm explaining what we were going to do and why we're not going to do it. Um, I think that's fair and responsible. The interest form, I, I mean, I guess we could, let's just discuss it. Um, at this point, we received one. It's from um, Bruce Mandel. Um, I reviewed it. I didn't thank you for providing that answer. I didn't see any potential conflicts. We would still re request that he, you know, touch base with the state ethics office to make sure. Um, I'm wondering if, I think what I would suggest is we would accept it, make a recommendation at the Tuesday meeting to um, bring him on subject to sign off by the state ethics and then at our next meeting, he could be involved in discussion. Um, what do you think about that? Okay. How do you do the state ethics part of it? Um, so he, he just basically gives them a call and you could either give them a call and give them the information or he can uh, write them. There's a form he can, can submit. Uh, he's not involved in any of the entities that have an interest. So, you know, we, we're taking our cue from the short-term rental work group and how they handled it. Uh, and doing it this way, uh, but I didn't see anything where there's a conflict, so I can't imagine they'll say anything, but yeah, go ahead and be involved. But that's up to them to determine. Um, and then once we have, uh, at least uh, Bruce and Andy, we could um, start to open more discussion up to the public Try and I think what we need to do is set an agenda. We have a charter now from the HTC, and um, we can work out some some goals for the work group itself. Uh, smaller goals, chunk things down, and develop a timeline of what we want to accomplish. 
Um, but as opposed to doing that before they're involved, I think we would want to wait until they're involved, right? Into modules. Well, we got like, this. Well, we got the solar to do, but like, what do we? What do we actually hope to? You know, we know what we want to accomplish for the work group because it has a charter from a thousand feet. But what do we want it at? What do we want to do at you know a hundred feet up? And looking at it and breaking it up into segments. You know, we've talked about a few different uh, approaches to helping to integrate solar. Mm -hmm. But let's identify them and turn them into action items with timelines. Okay. Because then we can, you know, we can actually then then actually start working on them. And um, hopefully, we'll have assistance from the uh, WPI students with gathering data and information. Uh, that will support uh, our being as a work group being able to make an informed decision. And our decision, to be clear, it is a decision on a recommendation, which will be reviewed OFC and then be forwarded to um, the full historic district commission. So um, I kind of feel like we could have done this in a weekend if we just had donuts and coffee and we were locked in a room with a bunch of people who were you know, interested, but um, the, I think, you know, the big thing was not crossing a line with the ethics commission because we don't want something to be um, torpedoed at the end because someone shouldn't have been there. And also I didn't want it to be on someone who wasn't aware all of a sudden, you know, they could be cast in a light that no one had an intention because they broke an ethics law. And plus they're like a $10,000 fine a piece. So just seemed like the way to approach this thing was that that way. Um, do you have any thoughts on those two things? Because that's, I mean, that's basically what we're here to meet on. No, unless we're going to, I'm trying to remember the things we came up with last week. Yeah, I was going to list them out. I didn't just because I knew we, uh, Andy said last week he was going to be here. And then Bruce emailed me, I think it was last night. And if he said, I, if I may, yeah, please. These, these are really, these are recorded and they're uploaded on the website. Oh, YouTube. good. Okay. Yes. Oh, I didn't see the last one. Maybe there's a lag. Okay. I will touch base with Florencia because I promise we record them so we can go back to them. Yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. Because then I can, I made some notes. I usually make good notes, but it'd be easier just to quickly listen to the. I will touch base. And once I find them, I can um, send you the links. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, do you have, uh, I mean, just to capture, do you have thoughts on maybe how to do that differently or? You mean the whole process? Well, what I just outlined, yeah. I mean, does it sound good to you? Does it sound like, you know, we're missing something? Do we? No. Okay. I, I think it's good. I think we just need to get it rolling. Yeah, I'm with you. I want to get going. Um, and then I think what we're going to do, we uh, do have a um, member of the public here today, and I would encourage members of the public, I never know where to look because it's like, we, you know, we're talking to each other about what being video recorded. <laughs> so it's like, hmm. and it's Zoom, it's really simple. It's, the camera's in front of you. Um, but I would encourage members of the public to attend. We would like to be getting feedback. Um, uh, on it, on uh, you know general topics, and then as we get into more detailed areas, getting feedback. Um, go ahead. May I suggest could this be a hybrid meeting? Um, let me think about that. It's tough. The only problem with being hybrid is that I'm running into this at another meeting uh, committee that I chair. Is it's hard to keep track of what's going on with people who want to talk on the computer and facilitate the meeting. Okay. But if you can do that, you know, if someone raises their hand, I, I yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't see a reason I mean, we shouldn't. For the most part, I either myself or some another staff member will be here for those meetings. We yeah. can manage the computer. Yeah. And then we have this lovely screen that we can kind of see. Yeah, we can broadcast up. Yeah, I think if we got the tech, let's use it. Okay. I'm not, I have no adversity to it other than I just wanted to quickly think through. I think that would make it easier for more people to attend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll consider that into the program. And um, how do we handle that with uh, 
you address that through Erica? Um, yes, I can check with her to see what time slots are available. Okay. Um, for the most part, I've noticed that in the afternoon, all these slots are available since there's more advisory boards. Right. Um, but I can certainly figure out with her and see what her schedule is if I can just schedule it. Right. Yeah. So maybe we can get some, um, maybe you could get some days and times, days and date time ranges. Okay. And I think it typically works better for the group that it be towards the end of the week. So a Thursday or a Friday and in the afternoon. Okay. But, um, you know, preferably not too late. And we'll see if it works. And if we can do that, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, that's very helpful. And then it will follow the same format as the HTC, right? It'll just go out in the agenda with the mm -hmm. um, meeting number and the invite. With uh, the link code. and code and it, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think one thing we're going to want to have on the agenda for the next meeting is uh, a public comment session to bring up topics that individuals would like to have the work group consider. Um, you know, because we want to we want to be incorporating that, I think, throughout the process. But initially, let's get when we're putting pen to paper on what it is we're going to do. It would be helpful to see what um, people in the industry uh, thoughts, their thoughts on it. And we can see if that's something we can incorporate. And if it's something we can incorporate, um, we can, great. If it's something we can't, I think it would be good to get it front-ended because anything that the WPI students are doing, if there's a chance that it can go into their study for um, information, you know, background information, if there's a topic someone suggests, um, we could consider that too. So, you know, there's kind of a dual utility there. Um, other than that, comments. Since we have Tim here, can I ask him a question? Oh, I love that. Yeah, I just, I'm trying to see where we can work that into our agenda without it being a, um, let me ju just bear with me. What, what's the nature of it? Does it fall under the interest forms or anything having to do with No, it was groups? about the idea that I had last week that I talked about. Of well, I mean, that, knew anything. that falls under data assessments provided by outside parties to determine specifics useful to HTC and related. I mean, we're having a discussion about, we'd be having a discussion about stuff that fits in that category. Mm -hmm. So ask away. Okay. Tim, I was trying to come up with, you know, ideas of how to incorporate more, mm -hmm. um, but still hold true to what we want in terms of standards. And I was reading about this solar garden idea. Have you heard of those? Yes. And have you seen any? It's under the concept of neighborhood solar. Yeah. yeah right. So um, they do exist. Yeah. And they are potentially solutions where you have areas within the neighborhood that you can put the solar in. Right. And then the via the grid, you what's called virtual net meter, the energy to everyone's meter in the neighborhood. Okay? Oh. Which is what is okay. going to take place at 31 Fairgrounds. So th think of 31 Fairgrounds, the new, um, uh, is it the Wiggles Way? Oh, yeah. Right? I just hope they look better than the renderings in the paper. Didn't we ask for wood? I think I think you're gonna have a try is it a trellis system something yeah. Like that, right? yeah it's gonna look marvelous so but that is conceptually neighborhood net meter whereby you've got one solar system that generates a lot of energy and that energy is both fit it's it, by by the energy's physical nature it will go to those units those houses but more importantly the grid will do a calculation in the sense that that solar is connected to one meter and that meter is gonna go backwards the entire time. So that meter is going backwards and everyone else's meter is gonna through bookkeeping at the back end, get those credits. And that's how it works. 
So, so who's paying the eight hundred thousand dollars for that? I think they did that through grants. Okay. They did that through a series of grants. Um, <clears throat> I was now, also thinking ground, like in cluster subdivisions the where there's big swaths of open. That would be great as well. Yeah. So if the developers were to set aside yeah. a piece of land to put in ground arrays, that would conceptually work. And, and the utility does support that concept. Okay. So that was an interesting idea so that every um, house didn't have to have them. That's but right. everybody benefited it's from it. It's conceptually an efficient way to do yeah. it. Well, I think one of the benefits of it too is that you don't have to do a home run. Uh, individual homes won't have to do a power, a line voltage drop from the solar to their home right. to benefit. You just do it to one central do meter. One meter. Yeah. So basically, uh, it's a really cool idea. Yeah, because otherwise you would have to run a power line from your house to the solar. Right, right, right. You don't have to do that. Yeah. So it's it's more cost effective. Two, I I would venture to guess that there are more grant, more substantial grant monies involved or available for clusters like that. So that would be like one of the things that we could say, oh, we'd like to know. Yeah, have the kids look. Right, because, research. and then the other thing is, is, and this is, so this is where the HTC perspective is a little different. So, and it just, uh, this is a constructive discussion. Tim, by the way, Tim Carruthers, I, uh, Tim, identify your, the company you work with. I work for Axma Energy. Okay, thank you. Just, you know, for disclosure. Um, Tim has suggested that if Dell developers set aside land, from the ACC perspective, if you are a homeowner and you want to benefit from solar, and the trade-off would be that it's on the very front of your home in a way that could be deemed kind of object objectionable with respect to the historic districts, the trade-off would be that you could still do it, but it would be in a ground array, but it wouldn't be a ground array only on your property. It would be shared amongst the cluster mm -hmm. and landscaping could be developed such that Yes, you would lose some yard space, but you would gain, you know, we're saving the planet here, right? That's well, the discussion we've been having. Conceptually, I mean, and these neighborhoods exist already today on Nantucket. They have the concept of a shared pool. Right? Yeah. It's a little shared power station. It's a little shared energy generation. It's ex exactly the same concept. So it, ha it would have to be done at the concept phase of the development. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, I could imagine the planning board or you guys saying, Where, where's your solar ground array going? Yeah. Well, but also we bring up a good point of like Noshop or Nashaquisset, they have common area. Yeah, well, like I mean, you could do like a recreational area with a giant pergola. Right, you have or common areas that could have like- A barn building. Yeah. And I think those are like really interesting potential solutions yeah. that can build like excitement with within, within the community and discussion. And I think if if the work group is focused solely on putting more only more solar on a house, and in particular the front elevation that's very visible without any mitigation, I don't think that's a big win for the community because there's a there are many other avenues to deploy solar. And it would be beneficial to get that discussion going. So then that discussion can translate to the HDC. We can get feedback as the organizational focus committee to bring back to the work group. And it can be an iterative process while we're while the work group is functioning, so that by the time the recommendations are developed, they're you know, they're solid. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be something that you know we get. You know, we're a work group that takes them to the HDC and they're like, well, you know, might want to start over. Like, you know, I think that there's a, and, and I think in a positive way, I think not in a shut down the recommendations way. I think in terms of, again, opening up these other areas or uh, methods of deploying solar on Nantucket. Um, one of the other things we talked about, Tim, and I think it's important is an idea of understanding what for the community, um, what the useful life is, what the current reclamation process is, where the industry is heading, and if solar is deployed at mass uh, over a short period of time, 
how is we as a community, how do we as a community address the need to eventually remove and landfill or disp otherwise dispose of this product? Um, I mean, we could be talking about potentially, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of this material. And it's, so that's an important discussion point. Some of that has to do, most of that has to do with the community uh, outside of the HTC, but some aspects of it have to do with the HTC with respect to um, mitigate. We were talking about the National Park Services as mitigation, they have, whether it's temporary, um, whether it's visual, whether there's a monetary offset. And what if, you know, the WPI students come back and they say, well, look, it isn't in the work in the work yet, but this is in development that reclamation will be able to reclaim, you know, 90% of this product. Um, there will be a net benefit when you're looking at the useful life with respect to the, the, uh, the energy costs and the utility of the energy costs from the sun versus from fossil fuels, on and on and on and on. And then the HTC can also be looking at that when it's tallying perhaps on the front of a structure that has limited access and therefore limited visibility. Who knows where that goes? Maybe those go on consent at some point because we realize that, gee, this, this is all gonna work out. The one I'm talking about, I'm not, not necessarily the one we approved last night, which was, where was that on? Um, that was or the, Tuesday night. Dartmouth. Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we the HCC determined that it had neither access uh, due to being at a dead end and very limited visibility. So, again, these are just kind of concepts that we can hope to bring together to make informed decisions. I can answer a couple of questions. Yeah, please. So the uh, with, with the caveat that you're going to do it again when we have a full group. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Happy to. So the mechanical components like the feet, the rails, those are going to have anywhere from a 50 to 100 year lifetime span, right? The panels, which everyone focuses on, they have a 25 year life expectancy. And at that point, they would be uh, taken down, sent back for recycling. So the, the, the recycling, the solar recycling industry is, is really gearing up now because it's pretty new industry conceptually. Mm -hmm. These products are built with a 25 year life expectancy. And so now the, the, some of the early systems from 20 years ago are just starting to age out. Yeah, California is a disaster. Yeah, I was reading an article about California is having a really tough time with it. Because um, they put in ginormous, like in the desert, Sort of yeah. Well, and the other thing where the students could get into looking at is, um, I, I think that's a great topic for the students. Yeah. Right. That's not going to upset anybody. Just come back with and inform us about you know long term lifespan recycling and, yeah. and solar. Well, and also like looking at phased deployment. So you've got the situation with respect to a return on your investment. You've got a situation where you're putting up a technology that is, I mean. To be honest, the tech hasn't changed dramatically. It's been refined. There hasn't been a universal remake of solar tech and probably on the photovoltaic cells themselves. There's been incremental increases with respect to efficiency, but there hasn't been some breakthrough that has made, a, you know, like with, for instance, a um, CPU where it's doubling. There's no Moore's law. Yeah. So, so Moore's law is in effect, but there will be the point I'm going towards is there will be a point where you have tech on your roof that either due to advancements with newer tech and or, and probably, and uh, degradation in terms of the efficiency that it, and whether there are more subsidies and the cost of solar is coming down where it would actually make sense to take what you have off your roof and replace it. So it would be useful to have some conceptual idea of what that looks like. Like, what does a timeline look like based upon certain assumptions? Here are the assumptions, here's the model, you know, maybe even a mathematical, and then we could always play with it and deploy it. You know, this could be part of the living document on the, on the software side. 
So that's one other aspect that we discussed at the last yeah, meeting. Quite, I mean, the, the, today, as of today, with the most recent uh, Inflation Reduction Act, when you factor that in that the 30% federal tax credit, it's got an accelerator to up to 40% with the caveat that the equipment is manufactured in the United States. So when you factor that in today, Nantucket residents with a rooftop system can expect a break-even or payback period of about seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. Seven to eight years. With a system that's got a life expectancy of 25 years. So for those next 18 years, 17 to 18 years, they're actually, they've got free energy and they, conceptually they're actually, gen they're, they're saving large amounts of money. So that's sort of like at the macro level. Now to your, when do people think they want to start upgrading? It's very similar conceptually to how people are with their computers. Well, they were with it, right? Some, some technical, techno people will want to maybe upgrade after 10 or 15 years because they want the latest, newest, flashiest thing. It's unlikely that anyone would do it in less than 10 because in most cases, they're gonna wait until it's been paid off and yeah. they've actually got a return on that investment. So we see that upgrade cycle starting for some people, and then it's really just those kind of like those technical people that are pushing it in that 10 to 15 year window. I think most people will wait 20 to 25 years before they go through the upgrade cycle. Yeah. That, that, that's my profession. No, and that makes sense. And, and so for us, and I think for the community, one of the benefits of having the students working on these types of things is it's not just a discussion. They're actually putting, you know, they're putting the assumptions to paper. They're being vetted, you know, by interviewing people mm -hmm. who are within the community in various walks of life, including users, uh, solar companies, uh, uh, the installers, just a host of different people to inform the assumptions and then actually developing a model. And we have that hard data in front of us. And I think that that could be really helpful in, in these discussions. Um, those were just, I think, three of the topics we discussed. I think we've come up with maybe eight or nine. And they're not, you know, it's not, nothing's new under the sun, no pun intended. We're, but it's, you know, it's just a matter of getting them documented and getting them acted on. Um, the other comments or questions for Tim? I wanted to uh, let you guys know we have nine minutes and I'd like to leave uh, in two minutes so that the uh, planning board executive commission committee can or executive session can go on or whatever it is. Maybe mis misunderstanding what I was told was happening because I was told as I walked in the door. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of my other questions would be uh, you guys, I think it was you, Tim, with the the skins that were getting pitched, if those could get a nest, it might be, in, you know what I mean? Right. Like, <coughs> that could eventually be successful. Yeah. Right, and maybe that's something, you know, the, the students look at in addition to how other historic communities are working with solar, um, what their, you know, trade-offs have been, what you know some imagery of of those you know maybe we'll do an hcc field trip to go take pictures in um Gloucester, Where? Gloucester. <laughs> the, the don't they have an historic district there Where? a small one Gloucester up in maine well it doesn't have to be in oh. massachusetts oh. um I, as you know we did try it yeah um, i think it eventually could be something viable um, so potentially, hmm. I, I, I'll stay open minded. I, 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 def, I think there's potential. So, for example, um, if if the front of the house, if if it meant that a, a Nantucket resident could put solar on the front of the house, if they deployed a skin that made it look like a shingle, a shingle, right? I, I think that would probably go down okay. Yeah. I think that's got potential. Yeah. yeah. And it may not have potential widely. Oh, yeah. But yeah. one minute. It may not have potential as widely as some would like, but it may certainly be enough to determine that of the four to six percent of the applications the HC doesn't approve, that two or three percent more would. Mm. 
So it, it may not be the solution for everyone, but it might be enough to make it a solution in, in some situations. But again, if we see more, if we can get imagery of- We, we don't bring stuff to you really that's on the front of the house. I know. No, no, no. no you don't, saying, but a lot of people are, do, so. I, so yeah. um, I, I look, I'm open to it. I think it's unfortunate that the model that we did, that homeowner didn't have a black roof. Yeah. And it, it 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 was it was difficult for it, I, I I got it. It, was like, well, it wasn't a black, and so it, it it wasn't a great use case. But it's not to say that it's something that couldn't be used later I agree on. With that. I yeah. Agree. All right, we're gonna so, roll. Okay. So uh, motion, motion to adjourn. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.